Hey folks, welcome back to Car Show and Tell. We're back again working on our free 2000 Kia Sportage Project Freya. It's been parked since 2012 and uh, needs quite a bit of work. Quite a bit of work. There it is. And we're going over the front suspension right now, taking it from rusty crusty and worn out to looking nice new and uh, ready for more service so we're going to do the other side this side's finished we're going to go around on the other side and we're going to get started on that so if you want to grab a fresh cup of coffee and you can follow along Okay, here we go. Let's see where I can put you. Let me get you right here, close to the action. This is what we're starting with here. Give you a little look. I've gone over everything. We disassembled it if you followed along in any of our last videos. Everything was disassembled. It was all very rusty, very corroded. These uh, northeastern winters are unfriendly, to say the least. To most vehicles, corrosion tends to build up. Fasteners get to get tend to get uh, a bit stubborn, and it can be difficult to get apart. But not out of the realm of possibility. So. Got everything cleaned up. I've scrubbed everything down with a wire brush and a nylon brush to get all the dirt and grime and some of the rust off. Can't really do anything about all the rust, but we can make it at least a bit nicer to work with. Uh, something that I accomplished while the cameras weren't rolling, I ran new brake lines and new vacuum lines for the front hubs. Um, I used copper. There's a new brake line material on the market. Well, I don't know, it's relatively new. Uh, I hadn't used it before, but I used it this time to run new brake lines for the front end. And I'll tell you, it was much easier to bend and shape and form. Um, it seemed to, to uh, take a double flare pretty nice. So I'm happy with the results. There's brake lines are run. They're hooked up here to our brake, new brake hose. So <clears throat> we got to get started and get the rest of this back together. So we'll get started here and we'll see how it goes. Okay. <clears throat> A new lower ball joint here. Pull this out of the package. Ball joint. It's got a new fastener on the bottom, a nice nylock nut, so I don't have to worry about a castle nut. And copper pin. Get rid of that. Get our package with our fasteners open. Lay our fasteners out here. And start with the rebuilt hub that I picked up for the front end. Now, normally I would go about getting new seals, new bearings, and doing that work myself to rebuild the hubs. I didn't do that this time. <clears throat> I was just happened to be on uh, Facebook Marketplace looking around at Kia parts to see what I could find and found these hubs they were already rebuilt brand new actually no they weren't rebuilt i think they were brand new kia parts in a kia box and uh it made a lot of sense to just go with that because the seller was only asking for 75 dollars for the pair which was a steal it was a no-brainer i would have spent at least that much on the purchase price of bearings and seals anyway 
Um, the time savings was a wash too because it was an hour away from where I lived. So I took the, the trip, put the kids in the car, rolled out uh, to the seller's location, bought the hubs, put them in the back of the car, and drove home. It was about two and a half hours, which I would have spent those two and a half hours anyway disassembling the old hubs, cleaning all the parts, putting the new bearings on, greasing everything, reassembling everything. So, you know, it was a no-brainer. It was easier to do to just go pick these up for 75 bucks and bring them home. <clears throat> okay. So here we are. Let me back you up here. Got my ball joint and my hub. We're going to install this ball joint onto the lower mount of the hub, just like so. And I'm going to screw the nut on the back side. Just hand tight for now. I can tighten this up later once the ball joint's actually mounted to the lower control arm. And I have my CD axle for the front end held up with a couple of with a with a rubber strap <clears throat> so actually what I'm going to do is I'll prep a couple of these bolts put the lock washers on them and get them ready to go so that I can pick the hub up hopefully hold it with one hand and then start threading those fasteners into it with my other I have my gloves on I want to keep my new bolts nice and clean. I don't want to crud those up before I've had a chance to put them in. So, I'm going to slide this over the shaft. Like so. Okay. Now I can take my rubber down. And then slide this new ball joint in where it belongs underneath. Try to hold the whole works up. And get one of these fasteners started. Get a couple of threads on one. Get a couple of threads run on the other. spinning there's four fasteners so pop these two into the rear try to line it up there we are that one's spinning pretty easy it just leaves one more. I'm gonna get my strap out of the way. Get this last one started. Whoops. These were 12 millimeter. So, grab my impact drill and a battery. I have one of these handy impact drill bits that accepts a socket. And plug her in. 
Get a 12 millimeter. You can double check. I am wrong. Maybe it was a 15. It was definitely not a 15 either. Maybe a 14. <laughs> My memory's not what it used to be. <laughs> it's a 14. Okay. Shift this to one side so that our drill. important to make sure that your fasteners are properly torqued down. Maybe it went in 13. It was a 13. Yep, yeah, it was a 13. That was wrong. Okay. Clean this over this way. I'll look up the torque spec off camera and I'll make sure that there's a tight and correct. Back on for now. I'll double check that seal ring later. All right. We have our upper control arm bolts. Now, if you watch the video where I disassembled this side, you'll know that I had to cut one to get the upper control arm out, and the other one came loose on its own. <coughs> so, here's the original factory bolt with the factory. Uh, uh, camber cam alignment cam mounted to it uh, it did come apart when I disassembled it so I popped it back on the bolt ran a bead of weld around it and then I had to grind this flat and fairly smooth smooth enough to work anyway this was a hardware store bolt same size same thread same strength which is the most important part you do not want to use bolts for your suspension that are weaker than what was originally designed this was a grade 8.8 .8 original bolt this was a grade 8.8 .8 from the hardware store it should work without any problems so i guess i'll talk about one other thing too i'm not sure how you guys like to uh prepare your bolts fasteners when you're working on cars but I'll share a little bit of knowledge something that I like to use I have the jug right here this is called clean strip concrete and metal prep they used to call it uh, acid etch acid wash and etch or acid etch and wash but they changed the name the last time I bought a jug this is just a phosphoric acid solution in water and I have some of the other fasteners that came off the car and I can show them to you I will take all of the fasteners just as they came off the car put them in a container and then submerge them overnight in that phosphoric acid solution 
And what that does is it dissolves all of the rust from the fasteners. It takes most of the, it takes the grease, the dirt, the rust, cleans all of that up, cleans them off very nice, and it leaves a nice gray phosphor coating on the fasteners as well. After that, I'll rinse them off in clean water to uh, neutralize the acids, and then I will put them back in a container and fill it with clean oil. Any kind of oil works just as long as it can get into the pores of the metal, soak in there, and provide some additional protection from future rust. Uh, it cleans them up real well, makes them much easier to reinstall, and it takes me much less time than it would take for me to run each fastener uh, on the wire wheel of my grinder. Like I said, I just soak them overnight, get up the next day, rinse them off, throw them in oil, and let them sit for another day. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of spare time, so it's no problem for me to just do it in a manner which can be done when I'm doing something else, while I'm at work or while I'm asleep or whatever. And, uh, you know, it's done. It's less work in the long run. <clears throat> Alright, got my lower ball joint, got my hub in, got my new upper control arm, and ball joint. The upper ball joint is not serviceable by itself, so you have to purchase this new upper control arm to get a new upper ball joint. And uh, it made a lot of sense. To me, anyway, because most of the time, you got an upper ball joint worn out. Typically, your upper control arm bushings are just as worn. And if they don't need replacement, then, well, they're probably going to need it eventually. So, might as well get it all in one crack. <coughs> so. I'm going to get my bolts, get my control arm, slot it in where it mounts like so, line up the holes in the bushings, and slide my fasteners into place. So, I have new nuts, new washers, and I had some washers somewhere, in my pile of fasteners, there they are, clean up the old lock washers, no big deal. Have any problem reusing lap washers? They'll, they'll work. They work the first time. They'll work a second time. I just gotta fit it on there. <laughs> Try to sneak it in here. Get it over the bolt. There's my large washer. And there goes one. There's my lock washer. There's my nut. Nice new nut. Fit it in here. Spin it on. Let me find that lock washer that I dropped. And that one. Oh, I see it. Be right back. <clears throat> Okay. There's my 
large washer and my lock washer and my new nut. Spin that sucker right on. Okay, now I'm not going to tighten these yet because I still have to fit my upper bowl joint into my hub. And it's much easier to move this upper control arm when the fasteners aren't tight. soft blow hammer. I don't want to mess anything up. Give it a couple of whacks with the end of a soft blow hammer. And that's in. And I've remembered what fastener was the pinch bolt. So I need a pinch bolt. And I need a nut. And I need a lock washer. I'm probably mistaken. I don't recall anymore. I could cheat and look at the other side, but I'm thinking. I think I'm just wrong. I think it was just bolt, lock washer, and nut. So, I have the indentation in the stud that comes down off my upper control arm. That's lined up inside of that hole so I can slide my bolt through and I should be able to just tighten it up this should it be the same size no, it's not so many different sizes on this car go. I'll torque that down to the correct spec later on when the camera's off. I'm sure you don't want to watch me hunt through a book for torque specs. Okay. That being done, I want to tighten up the nut. It's on the bottom here on my lower ball joint. I have to remember what size it was. Try a 19. Nope. Let's try a 21. Wrong again. Uh, that's the extent of my metric sockets. Let's try one inch. One inch is slightly too big. 15 sixteenths. Nice and snug. <clears throat> Put that on my ratchet. Snug this up. That's as snug as it's going to get at this point. Yep. I think the nylock nuts. I think the whole joint's spinning at this point. Let me see. Maybe not. The ball joint being what it is. Sometimes when you try to run a nut on, 
the entire joint spins. And this one didn't. So that's good. That's nice and snug. I'll torque it down later. So when I bought the hubs, they were in a box from Kia Motors. And nice, shiny, rebuilt. New bearings felt good. Um, these great backing plates, though. Looked to be like they were just plain pickled steel. So, not the greatest at rust prevention, that pickled steel. So, I did take that off and cleaned it, wiped it down with some alcohol, and just put a couple coats of gray spray paint on there in the hopes that it might hold off that Pennsylvania rust for, you know, another year or two. Just trying to extend the service life because when I took the car apart, I'm fairly certain there wasn't very much of a brake bagging plate left at all. It was just rust. Anyhow, <clears throat> so that's together. Our next step will be fitting of our brake rotor. Now, this is not a new rotor. This is the same rotor that I took off. I did take this and sandblast it after I measured it. Now, there's a minimum thickness and it's cast into the back side of the rotor. Minimum thickness 8.82. Uh, or 0.882 okay it's not in metric this is in inches 0.882 meaning 0.882 inches if you have a dial caliper or a vernier caliper or a micrometer you're supposed to check it with a micrometer and you don't just check it in one place you can check it several different places around the circumference of the rotor I checked this one out Carefully, um, even in the pitted areas, it was still well over 0.882 inches. It still has plenty of service life left. <clears throat> so, I decided I was just going to reuse these old rotors after I sandblasted them, removed all the rust. I'm not sure if they're warped or not. I didn't check that, didn't check the run out, but, you know... Rotors are cheap. If you'd like to run new rotors instead, by all means. I'm, well, you know, I like to save money where I can. And I felt like, since I didn't really need to purchase brand new rotors, I was just going to try to coax a little bit more life out of these. So, we'll line up the holes our rotor retention screws go into. We'll slide it over and into place. If you remember watching the disassembly video, one of the screws came out and one of them was too stubborn. So, you really only need one of these to retain it. So, that's all I'm going to use today. This one rotor screw, you slide the rotor back into place, tighten her down. And it's going to hold that on there perfectly fine by itself. And different manufacturers have different ways of holding their rotors in place. Some use screws, some use small clips to do that. Either way, if you're missing one, it's no big headache, no worry. It's doing just fine by itself. And if you have to disassemble it later on, it's half the headache that you have to deal with. And being that this screw had all the corrosion removed from it, and we put a little bit of oil in it, oil on it, it had some oil on it from soaking in the oil when I ran it back in here, hopefully it should remain pretty corrosion free for the next time that I have to disassemble this mess. Alright, let's move on. Here's our brake caliper and bracket. These are the same brake caliper and bracket that we removed in the disassembly video. I did the same thing 
than this as I did with the rotor. Disassembled it. So you can use compressed air in your brake hose fastener hole to blow your disc brake piston out of the caliper. Now when you do that, I always find it's a good idea to fill this cavity with a shop rag or two. Fold it up, tuck it in here, typically one does the trick. You take the blower, make some compressed air, wrap a little rubber tape around the end of it to seal it off, shove it in there nice and tight, and give it some air. Now, when you do that, please, please, please do it safely. You do not want your little fingies in between here while you're blowing the piston out of it because what's going to happen to them fingies? They're going to get, there's, there's pistons, they come out of there with a lot of force sometimes, okay? Depends on how much air pressure you use, but most of the time it takes sufficient air pressure to move that piston out. But when it gets to the end of it, boom, it blows right out. If your little fingies are in there, man, you're going to have a bad day. Trust me, I've never done it. But uh, huh, I'm sure you can find a YouTube video somewhere of somebody doing it. So, you know, learn from their mistake. After that piston was out, I removed the dust seal. I removed the sealing, the O-ring that seals the caliper piston to the inside bore of the caliper. Cleaned them both well. Just regular soapy water on dish detergent you don't want to use any solvents on those rubber components because it's going to swell them once they're swollen they'll never go back into place so the on dish soap and a little bit of warm water is usually all it takes to do the trick and clean them up nice same thing with the rubber bushings here to go around our fasteners scrub them with an old toothbrush and some water and dawn clean them up made sure that they weren't torn and they would still do the job well and they're perfectly fine um, fasteners that were removed from the caliper to the bracket those got the same treatment as the rest of those fasteners uh, there's a, a rubber anti-chatter covering over the one bolt remove that put those bolts in the same container with the same phosphoric acid solution as all of the rest of the fasteners it's pretty mild it doesn't really damage the, uh, the nice plated coating on your brake caliper fasteners um, you know if you don't let them soak in there forever uh, if you let them go too long it'll chew the plating off you don't want to chew the plating off you just want to clean it up clean the dirt off all of these fasteners and the corrosion off the heads clean the rest of the fasteners reapplied the the, <clears throat> the rubber to the one fastener lubed both fasteners up very well um, clean the inside of the bores the fastener bores in this caliper bracket with a small uh, circular wire brush spun with a drill just in and out a few times just to scrub the bores clean and blew the rust and dirt out of them. Um, lubricated these fasteners really well with disc brake, silicon disc brake lubricant. Um, these fasteners, or these calipers are a floating design. They only have a piston on one side. So <clears throat> to balance the force out, the entire caliper slides back and forth on this bracket. You can see it move okay so the force that's applied by the cylinder on one side is going to be balanced out and applied to the opposite piston when the caliper slides on its mounting uh, mounting hardware I just knock my brake pad out so you want to make sure that that caliper has the action it needs to slide back and forth on its bracket. Otherwise, you're going to wear one brake pad out and hardly wear the opposite side out. If you ever disassemble your brakes and you find one pad's almost worn out or more significantly worn than the pad on the opposite side, chances are your caliper can't slide. OK? 
okay? Your fasteners are bound up in the bracket bore and it won't allow this caliper to move back and forth and do the job that it's supposed to do. That also makes stopping the vehicle more difficult when you can only apply force to one brake pad, whereas you can apply it to both brake pads, you know, it, it's not going to work as efficiently. Only braking with most of the force applied to one brake pad or the other. Okay, <clears throat> so once all the lube was applied, the fasteners were reinstalled. Oh, I did throw some cheap paint on here too, just to keep the corrosion down again. Uh, blasted the caliper, blasted the bracket threw some cheap paint on, lubed everything well, slid my new pads in here, and one other note is our bleeder. The original bleeder was corroded in place in our caliper and did not come out. When I tried to remove it, it just snapped right off. So what I wound up doing was centering up. I took my drill, my hand drill, took my hand drill, put a drill bit in it, chucked a bit, that was slightly less than the diameter of the original bleeder and centered it up very well and drilled down through the bleeder perfectly, almost perfectly. Just enough that all I had to do was reach in with a small pick and remove what was left of the original bleeder out of the remaining threads. <clears throat> I reached into my pile of parts, I found another bleeder that was slightly oversized. Measured the threads, selected the drill bit that was the proper drill bit to, or the, you know, to drill the hole that was needed to tap the threads for the new bleeder. So we drilled that out, <clears throat> ran a tap down through it, and then put my new bleeder in. Now, one thing that's important to, to do here is when you're replacing a bleeder, you want to make sure that the hole that you bore and tap for your new bleeder is perfectly centered on the hole for the old bleeder. If you're fitting an oversized bleeder, it has to be perfectly centered because tightening this is what seals that hole. When you tighten your bleeder down, it seals that hole in the aluminum caliper. Okay? So, got my drilling and tapping done, tightened my new bleeder down, and put a little bit of pressure with an air hose just into here. Blew a little bit of compressed air in, because I wanted to see if I got any compressed air. If you can blow into your bleeder with compressed air, and you get air out of this hole, it means this bleeder isn't sealed. It means you're never going to be able to use the, this caliper. Um, Sometimes if it's a small leak, you can loosen and tighten your bleeder a few times and that will, uh, it will, uh, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? It will eventually uh, wear into one another. They'll wear into one another. Your bleeder will, well, your bleeder being a harder, it's a steel, and your caliper being aluminum, eventually your bleeder will deform the aluminum in the caliper enough to create a nice seal, okay? And you'll be able to use this caliper again. It'll seal off when you've done bleeding your brakes and you crank that bleeder closed again. It'll keep the pressure inside the caliper and not allow it to leak past here and out of your bleeder screw. <clears throat> so that's the process for rebuilding and reconditioning an old caliper and bracket. We got our new pads in, so all we have to do is install this onto our hub, all one unit, easy peasy. I have my good clean fasteners here. Should make the job very quick, very easy. We got a lock washer and two bolts. I should say two bolts and two lock washers. We're gonna slide this over the rotor. Line up my bolt holes. And then start threading my fasteners in. Got this one in the top. 
it's turning nice and smooth people oh I love that assembly is so much easier when you've made great preparation when you've got good clean parts good clean fasteners typically everything goes back together like a breeze Okay, and there's your 17s. There's 17 or 19. Yeah, of course I'm wrong again. Let's try. It's all dust in here. There's my 19. Put this away. Tighten that one. Tighten that one. Done. So easy. Oh, well. Got you here. So, we got that back in place. We need to attach the end of our new brake line. So, let me get my... I have some unused... My new brake line, apparently, they forgot to put new copper washers in with it. Luckily, I have some in my box of various hardware and such but I think they're the correct size my banjo bolt same thing oh it actually has a washer on it that's a that's a new one okay cool I only need one copper washer so <clears throat> banjo bolt same thing I clean that up in the same phosphoric acid solution it didn't chew the plate, plated uh, surface off of my fastener. It seems to have cleaned it up nice. I'm sure it cleaned the uh, internal passage in the bolt as well. And left it to soak in some oil too. Shouldn't be any problem. Here's this little coating of oil on the surface of this bolt. I don't think it's going to have any detrimental effects on our brake fluid. Not a whole lot. So... Let's get our hose lined up where it belongs. Place my copper washer. I have a copper washer on the inside, copper washer on the outside. Okay. And get it lined up. Fastener in. And I think that sucker's cross threading, isn't it? What size is that? Small 10. Okay, I got one right. It's a 12. Let me back this sucker out. Let's see if it's bigger than a cross thread. There we go. Said that a little bit. That feels much better. I'm not so sure if there's a torque spec on a brake hose. Who knows? It might be. I could be completely wrong about that. Tighten this down till it feels good. It feels pretty good. So our brake hose is attached. One more thing before we move on. If you've ever watched anybody do brakes or you've ever done brakes yourself, I've seen people do this before. They take both calipers off the front of their car and then they get their new calipers and they put their new calipers on the front of their car and then they try to bleed their brakes and I can't for the life of them figure out why their pedal is so spongy and it won't bleed out and I've had friends call me up in the past and say hey can you come help me out I did the brakes in my car but I can't get this thing to bleed right and I'll go over and I'll look at the car 
and I'll say, your calipers are on wrong. And they go, huh? And I say, yeah, your calipers are on wrong. Uh, what very long ago, maybe uh, not even a year ago, my neighbor called me, had me come over and look at his pickup truck. He was doing brakes and calipers on his pickup truck. I get over there, front end of the truck's jacked up. The brakes are on, new brakes are on, but he can't bleed the thing. <clears throat> and I look at him and I say, the calipers are on the wrong side. And he says, huh? And I say, your calipers are on the wrong side. And he says, how do you know? And I say, look at your brake bleeders. They're not up. They're not at the top of the brake cylinder. They're at the very bottom of your brake cylinder. So all of that brake fluid is filling, only partially filling that hole up. And the rest of the air in the system is trapped in the top. And you can never bleed that air out when it's trapped in the top and your bleeder is at the bottom. So take your calipers back off and switch them side to side. That way your bleeders are at the top of your brake cylinder. Then you'll be able to bleed the air out. And they go, oh, and I go, yeah, that's right. Air is lighter than water, or sorry, air is lighter than brake fluid. So it's going to rise to the top. Sort of like a house of pain songs. And the cream of the crop arise to the top. Anyway, you don't want to hear me sing. So that's where we're at right now. There's not much else I can do at the moment. Oh, I lied. I can put my hub back on. I forgot about that. <clears throat> Found my hub fasteners. My handy little envelope. And I have my nicely rebuilt, repainted hub. Okay. Do the same thing with this as I've done with most of the other parts here. Okay, there's some snap rings, one here, one in the center. You remove those snap rings, and basically everything falls right out. Take everything, throw it in a bucket or a container with some solvent, clean all the old grease, all the dirt, all of the nastiness out of there. And then lube everything very well and reassemble it. The way, basically the way it came apart pay attention when all the things are coming out of it so you know how to get it back together put your snap rings back in there you're good to go you got a nice clean hub new grease and I did take the bottom off and throw in a new coat of paint on <clears throat> let me set that on a rack I don't want to, don't want to scratch that new paint all right now we're going to take fasteners for both my axle shaft and the bolts for my hub are all in this envelope kept them together so I can take care of it all at the same time my hub can go a bag on but not until I've properly secured the end of my stub shaft I have a washer that goes on the axle shaft, like so. Make sure my axle's all the way through. And then I have an external snap ring that goes on as well. Have to spread it out, slide it on. And most of the time, you can just take a screwdriver. Work it around. Work the snap ring back into place. Now, the new hubs that I got, sorry, not, yeah, not, yeah, they are new, not new, not, not rebuilt, new, I was about to say rebuilt. They did come with new washers and new snap rings. So, these are actually the new ones, but, if you're rebuilding, the old ones are more than likely perfectly fine to use for what you need them to do. Generally, if the snap ring isn't broken, it's 
perfectly fine. Okay, got our hub installed. We got good clean grease in here. Good clean grease in here. Gonna slide that over the end. Oh, make sure you get this O-ring back in here, right? Because these are vacuum operated hubs. You don't wanna leave your O-ring out. That'll cause your problems. Actually, what I need to do is I'm going to borrow a little grease from there and I'm going to grease this O-ring. Just a little bit of grease on the end of my finger. Wiped around the surface of the O-ring to help it slide back into this part of the hub without rolling over creating a place for a vacuum leak and as a vacuum leak those hubs aren't going to work okay it's just going to pull the engine is going to pull air right through that hub right through the vacuum hose or the line and your hubs aren't going to want to engage compress that in there get a little spin Make sure it's lined up. And let me make sure. It's holding lined up. It's close. And we got six fasteners. These were also soaked in that phosphoric acid solution but not for as long because these have a nice black uh, nice black and finish on them that I didn't want to ruin so I didn't soak those quite as long I soaked them long enough to get most of the dirt off and a little bit of the corrosion and I wiped the heads down and I scrubbed the threaded shanks of these bolts with a wire brush enough to get the threads cleaned up nice so that these would go in back into their holes and homes nice and easy like everything else I'm putting back together if I had to fight a fastener on the way out I sure as heck don't want to fight a fastener on the way back in either so far this reassembly process has gone much much nicer much less frustrating and the total disassembly went. I think these are tens. I think they're 12 point. I'm going to use a six point. I'll try to use six point sockets when and wherever possible. Could be having that ratchet. Give me that ratchet. Thank you. Oh, right here. Give my ratchet. And. For now, I'm going to cross. Go cross. Right? Sort of like tightening lug nuts. You don't go around in a circle. You go crisscross. Crisscross applesauce. Can you tell I have kids? I'm just going to tighten these down. Snug for now. Again. I'll find that torque spec later on. When I have time to search through the book, when I'm not in front of the camera, and when the wheel's back on, I will set the torque on these fasteners in the proper amount as well. So, there we have it, folks. Right now, that's all we can do because I did make one rookie mistake. I know. When I took the original strut apart, which was also done the jankiest way possible. I put my impact gun, my impact wrench, on the fastener, the nut that holds the strut together at the top, and um, set it in reverse and let fly. Now, the struts, the springs in these things don't have a whole lot of tension behind them, so it didn't fly all over the place. Like some I've seen. There's uh, 
most strut assemblies, I'll put a spring compressor on and tighten that. Just snug that spring compressor up to hold the spring in place. And then I'll disassemble the strut assembly. Um, just for safety's sake. It's the safest thing to do. And it's probably what I should do all the time. I took a gamble. It paid off. <clears throat> you know, took the nut off. It, you know, the strut moved a couple of feet. And that was it. Um, got everything to take it apart, uh, saved the spring, <clears throat> threw the rest in my junk pile to take to the recyclers, um, forgot to remove, there's a rubber isolator that goes between the spring and between the spring pad that's mounted to the strut. Uh, left that on there, hauled it to the recyclers and never took it off, so... I can't reassemble the new strut until I get that rubber spring pad in. I ordered another one. It's coming. So, unfortunately, my rookie mistake cost me some time. I'm just going to have to wait until the new rubber isolator comes. And then I can reassemble the spring in the strut. And you'll see that. And we'll get all of that put back together on the car as well. So, for now, we're done, folks. That's it. Uh, hope you learned something handy, something you can use in the future, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, that's about it, hope you guys had fun watching, and, uh, keep tabs on the project, we got some other things coming up after this project's done, we got some other cars on tap, we have, uh, right here, I'll show you, we got our, we got a Mustang that we got to put a new convertible top on. Uh, I got my C4 Corvette that we've got to do some suspension work to. Um, and the latest acquisition, which isn't even around here yet, is a uh, nice 1987 Honda CRX SI, which I, I used to own one. And, you know, that car was a whole lot of fun. I guess I got the nostalgia bug. And, uh, yeah, I found a cheap one, so we're going to have another one. Um, but, you know, before that happens, i got a whole lot more work to do on this project, so. Besides that, there's some other cars I think I might do some features on, might do some shows, might go to the drag races. Who knows what we're going to do next. So I hope you keep touch. Hope hope you keep in touch. Keep tabs on us. Follow along uh, if you'd like to. Like and subscribe. Leave some comments if you want. I'd be happy to read them. And, uh, yeah, ring the little bell. Um, all right. That's about it for tonight, folks. I gotta go make dinner. Have fun. Take care. Bye-bye.